This is a Colorado kid, Mike Rapata. I'm live with Wolfie D. Hey, this is Jimmy Street, host of the Live and in Color with Wolfie D podcast. Hear the life and times of professional wrestler Wolfie D. From his time in the territories with PG-13 to his time in WWE, ECW, WCW, TNA, and more. Nothing is off limits and nothing will be held back. Thanks again for tuning in. Here he is, Wolfie D. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. Man, I got to figure out a better open, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What the fuck is that, man? I mean, it's just comfortable for you, I guess, I brother. I guess. I don't know. It is kind of your thing, you know. So. It, it starts to become, I was thinking about that, man. It's like, why am I, why do I say that? I don't know what else to say. I got to think of something cool, maybe. I don't know. But, man, because usually, you know, we're just chilling around the house and I'm walking around doing stuff or talking to you, whatever. And uh, that's what yeah. I'm up with. Is welcome, welcome, welcome. But today, man, we got a very special guest. And I always say that, too. Uh, but this one, man. He don't do podcasts. He don't yeah. do hardly anything. I know. I didn't know where he was. I hoped he was still alive. I hadn't heard anything about him, and I reached out to a few people to get his phone number because you and I had talked about it. And uh, it took us a couple of days, and and we made contact with Mike Rapata, the Colorado kid. Man, that's cool, dude. Man, Mike's a cool guy. I don't know him that well. I got to, you know, I got to work shows with him for when I worked yeah. some for Bert. You know, he yeah. was always the, the guy there. But, you know, I mean, dude, I'm looking at his resume. He's a former NWA champion. He's a former yeah. USWA yeah. champion. Yeah, he you know? was, he was good, man. Yeah. And, but, you know, uh, I'm going to tell you all a funny story, man. Just, Please. I don't, I don't know if you, if you, uh, just like me, my mind goes a thousand different directions sometimes during the day. So I go outside yesterday and uh, I go to check the mail, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I go out there and uh, come back in and the, the, the trash cans out there from that morning, you know, we put it out yesterday morning for the trash to come and they'd already come. So I grab my trash can and my mail and I roll it back up to the you know, front of my, my next to my garage there. Yeah. And my neighbors, you know, we're cool with my neighbors and they weren't home and I, it just felt nice outside. I don't, you know, I hadn't been it had rained for like a week straight, it seemed like. So anyway, it was just like, oh, you know, I'll be a nice guy. I go over here and get my neighbor's trash can. I get my neighbor's trash can. I'm walking. I'm, I'm probably looking at my phone or thinking or something. Next thing I know, I'm opening my front door about to pull their trash can into my living room <laughs> <laughs> and i stopped and i'm like what the heck i like i missed the past you know 20 yards of walking somewhere <laughs> and uh, man, man i felt so stupid man i'm glad nobody was watching <laughs> <laughs> you ever do that zone out like oh, that I, all the I think it might have been about 420 uh, our time, but I'm not sure, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, all the time. Like, I'll accidentally remember that I took TV remote to my truck to go get food. Oh. I was like, I'll, I'll bring in the mail and leave it on the porch. Or, yeah. I mean, all the time, bro. I don't know if I'm just like, I think... You know, you and I are very similar because we're both born in the same time frame. And I don't know if it's a Sagittarius thing <laughs> where we're, we're thinking about a million other things. I mean, I don't really do the, the you know, astrology stuff, but yeah. somebody out there that knows about that stuff, let us know if it's just we're being idiots or <laughs> if it's yeah. something. But, you, you know, know, I've been doing a lot of somebody, so, some people have seen on my uh, Facebook and stuff, this, uh, I've been into this wood burning and I got some ideas out the yin yang. I got wood out the yin yang and folks check my stuff out because I'm going to have it all for sale. So, yeah. Please. Then this is all hand drawn stuff. I'm not using uh, a machine. I'm I am. I mean, it's a machine. It's like a tattoo gun. What a what a uh, wood burning uh, gun kind of looks like. And I'm doing it all by hand. And I'm I'm gonna make some clocks. I've got some other ideas that are gonna be super cool. Some wrestling related. Uh, I just started a kiss set of uh, drink coasters that looks pretty cool. You seen that, Jimmy? Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. yeah so Y'all hit me up. I can do a lot of stuff, man. And uh, I, I enjoy sitting at home 
creating stuff, man, especially if people want to buy it, it makes it even better. It does, but it's beautiful work, man. It really does. It looks great. I've seen some of the preliminary stuff and yeah. you, you're on, I mean, you you know, you're artistic. Everybody knows that, but when it comes down to it, you know, man, you, you it's a really cool idea what you're working with right now. So I'm excited to see. Maybe yeah. we'll, uh, maybe we'll see some live and in color with Wolfie D podcast coasters sometime or yeah. something, or, yeah. you know, cool. your grandpa on one I'll or whatever. I'll make a order it. I'll make yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, what do you need? What do you need? So, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, man, I'm 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 excited to see what you can do with this. This the ideas that you have. I'll just say this: if you uh-huh. and I believe that you can pull it off, that's no yeah. question. But right. if you pull them off, it's going to be amazing. And yeah. and I'm just saying, wrestling fans, rock and roll fans, be prepared. <laughs> get your go go cash your check and get some I money. Some fans, I've got some football ideas too. So. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. whoever yeah. you like. Whoever you like, right? Just not yeah. the Texans or anybody. <laughs> or anybody. So. Well, all right, brother. Let's uh, let's get the Colorado kid on here. Now, do we have to call Colorado, or is he? He's actually. Many- I didn't. I did. I wondered that myself. But once I got <laughs> the number, it's funny. It's the area code is not where he's at now. He's in Illinois. He told me. Uh, okay. okay. But uh, that. Uh, that area code is not Illinois. He's probably on the, he's a fugitive. We'll ask him (laughs) after these messages. Getting engaged is a moment worth cherishing. A one of a kind ring that you design at blue Nile can help your love sparkle. Just choose your diamond and setting. When you found the one you'll get it delivered right to your door. Finding the right engagement ring can be nerve wracking at blue Nile. You'll have the expert guidance needed and a diamond guarantee that ensures you're getting the highest quality at the best price. Cherish all of life's moments and save up to 30% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com. Hey, folks, to get your official Live It In Color with Wolfie D merchandise, go to ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash Live Wolfie D. Check it out. If you're listening to Live and in Color with Wolfie D on Apple Podcast and like what you're hearing, go ahead and leave a five-star rating. And while you're at it, write a review. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you'd like to hear in the future. It's very important to us and always appreciated. Thanks again. All right, guys, we're back and we've got our guest on. Jimmy, the reason this one came about, man, I can't believe we didn't think of this of him before now. Uh, but it's like uh, Brian Hardison on YouTube, and what is it called? Brian's what, Jimmy? Brian Turner's VHS Rehab on YouTube. Great right. channel. Okay, yeah, check that out. Uh, but anyway, he posted uh, the finish of a match involving myself and. Mike Cropata and he had Jackie Fargo in his in his corner, and I always remember I love that because Jackie was there, but I always enjoyed working with uh, Mike as well. And uh, so I'm beating the fire out of this uh, Colorado kid, man. I don't even know why he let me do half the things I was doing to him. I'm putting him through tables, hitting him with chairs, and that daggum Jackie Fargo gets in and gives me a punch, and Colorado kid crushes my dreams. But anyway. I hadn't talked to you in forever. Everybody, Colorado kid, Micropato. Hey, guys. How you doing? (laughs) I'm doing good, buddy. I can't believe you let me do some of that stuff to you, man. Oh, my God. You you hit me in the face with a damn uh, hubcap so many times. (laughs) 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 And I I loved every bit of it. (laughs) Absolutely. We had some great matches, man. I always enjoyed working with you. It was was one of those things, too, where, like – you were kind of Bert's dude, and I was kind of Randy's guy. You know what I mean? And, and the promoters, like, them themselves create the, you know, so, like, when me and you would wrestle each other, you know, Bert's want, no, uh, Colorado should win, and Randy might be thinking, oh, no, Wolfie should, you know, that is so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, we had some good times, man, even in the dressing room, man. Uh the hacky sack. Oh my god! Uh, so yeah, that's what I was you used to, to You used to bring a hacky sack, and then me, yeah. and you, and Brian Christopher, and who else played? Jamie. Who else JC, played? JC Ice and uh, uh, oh my god! Well, there were seven of us that one day that, that we was playing. We we had seven yeah. of us, and and yeah. we got got it around 
seven times. And, uh, and when we completed the seven hacks, I was like, I mean, I'm, oh, my God, we, we made it, you know. To, and uh, so we pop, we, you know, the bag hits the floor, we pop, you know, we're high-fiving and everybody. And then Jerry Lawler comes over and starts chewing out Brian Christopher's ass. And, uh, now, let me say, here's what here's the way I remember him, the, the very first thing, like he – as we're he's walked through the middle of us with like almost no expression and mumbled kind of like under his breath something about like if y'all quit playing fucking hacky sack we might be drawing and going over your match or some shit like that man and, yeah, yeah. And all of us got quiet <laughs> and then I guess he might have I got on Brian individually but then you told me something the other day when I first talked to you about you went to Lawler afterwards tell that part of it yeah so so uh. So I go to Jerry Lawler and I told Jerry, I said, that, that, that was my hacky sack, you know, my bad, you know, I didn't mean to, you know, bring it. Didn't think that he was going to chew my ass out. And boy, he, he scolded me just like he fucking scolded Brian. So I, I went, you know, running with my tail between my legs back to Brian. And I was like, I told your dad, you know what? You know what? What I've done. You know it was my hacky sack, and he looked at me, and he he gave me a stupid look. And he goes, "Why would you do that?" And I, was like, I, I don't know. I just you know I'm I'm just a dumbass. I, <laughs> I can see the look that he gave you too. Why would you do that? I can see yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> that's so funny, man. But dude, that's how yeah. we we didn't have uh, cell phones and tablets and shit. You know, in the locker room no, it was a no. boring fucking place. Oh, Oh yeah! Oh my God! You go yeah. crazy. And once in a you got your room, matches, bro. yeah. Once you got your matches all talked out, and then, then you know we had time to kill, and and that's the way yeah. we killed the uh, you know. I mean, yeah. you could be doing the, way worse stuff. I mean, come on, seriously. Hey, oh, yeah, just for right. the people listening, just for the people listening, man, because like I played uh, a lot of hacky sack in like I guess middle school, early high school, and so I was pretty decent. You obviously it was your hacky sack. You knew how to hacky sack, and Brian was pretty yeah, good. Yeah. And, and you know what I mean? We were. I remember a bunch of times when we were straight up. It would go over our head, and we fucking sweet chin music that motherfucker back over into the fucking oh, 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 field wow. to play. I had a, I had a unique uh, kick. I, I I would just you know, and I wasn't even looking at the hacky sack, and I just throw my foot behind me, yeah. and. Uh, I, I, I'd feel it hit the bottom of my foot and that thing had come right back over back into wow. play. And I was like, damn, you know, I, I you know, that's yeah. that so sweet. Every time it, you know, it, it happened a lot of times that, it but... didn't, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it brings that's... back memories, it brings back memories. But we, moral of the story is Lawler don't like you playing hacky sack. King is not a hacky sack fan. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. Not at all. That's hilarious, man. So, hey, tell everybody, man, what you've been up to, man. Like, I ain't seen you, heard from you, heard of, heard your name forever. It's like you just disappeared, man. What happened? Well, um, I, I came back to Nashville, and then that's whenever I was working back with uh, uh, Bert, and I was mm. doing the Joker character, you know, in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, my daughter told me whenever she was in uh, the freshman in the uh, high school she says dad can we go to uh whenever i graduate and can you uh you want to go back to california and because mm -hmm. i've been living out there you know for like eight years before and right, uh right. and I, I said you know hell i've That's still got, got all my old friends <laughs> 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 go ahead, I, I, used to hacky sack, I used to hacky sack in colorado it's, no, uh, okay. you know, actually, I don't let me distract you. Continue in, with the story. <laughs> <laughs> so I was hacking sacking in a uh, college. So, but you know, I'm, that goes on. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so my my daughter wants to go to uh, California. So uh, we, she's walking across. She's uh, at the Nashville School of Arts. Uh, it's uh -huh. a special school that uh, you've got to uh, audition to get in. Yeah. And I thought, you know, she'd get in with uh, her drawings and stuff because she, you know, she draws like Jerry the King Lawler does. Wow. And uh, but but then she uh, starts singing, and uh, I was like, uh, all I hear was some screaming up in the bathroom whenever I, you know, I was like, wait, are you all right up there? And, and she goes, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm just singing. I was like, oh my god, sounds like somebody's killing a cat. So that's all I heard, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so then uh she's walking across the stage and she uh um 
gets her diploma and then she sings after the fact and uh she's uh-huh. like pat benatar swinging her head doing a, a crazy song you know it's just you know young people song <laughs> yeah and uh yeah. <laughs> i was like i was like oh my god I, i've got to make arrangements i got to move to california <laughs> so, <laughs> so i went out there for about two years and then uh then i come back here got married and then uh been married well, to her mother, actually, we've been going to, together on and off for it's now twenty five, almost twenty five years, and yeah, uh, so I married her the last what was it for two thousand eighteen? Okay, or, yeah, two thousand eighteen. Yeah, congratulations. So. That's good, man. So, yeah, she put up with me, and and so you know, I figure you know loyalty. You know, she's <laughs> I can't run yeah. her off. Let her go over, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's rewind just a minute, man, and just talk about uh, what brought you into the wrestling business. What made you want to do it? And, you know, the, the, the generic question of what made you want to do it? And then how did you how did you find the end? Well, um, I, I was watching Macho Man and um, Lanny Poffo, and uh, they they was working against each other. You know, of course, I didn't know that they were brothers. You know? So he, he, he was he was the first uh wrestling hero that i you know that i knew and yeah. uh so years later you know and then i got married to the first ex-wife and then uh you know i've only had two wives <laughs> so it's a, she, she's the ex-wife yeah. <laughs> so anyway while i was married to her uh i would watch wrestling all the time matter of fact the, uh, our honeymoon we go to nashville and uh i turned How old on you? Week, uh 21 21 okay, okay. yeah when, when when i was 21 and uh then uh so I, we go to nashville on our honeymoon so we got married to my my first wife her name's angie and uh so we we go to hallmark on trinity lane so it's uh, you know kind of run down piece of you yeah. know crap motel you know so uh <laughs> we stay there and then as soon as we you know uh unload all, all the shit out of the jeep we uh, turn on the tv and uh the wrestling's on. And uh, mm-hmm. so she drags a chair over there and she's getting reaching up, you know, going to change the channel. And I was uh, like, oh, hell no. So I, I yeah, snatch yeah. her up in a power slam <laughs> <laughs> and I bury her on the fucking bed, or, you know. And, and, uh, and uh, so uh, as I slam her down on the bed, um, I tell her, I said, look, when that TV's on wrestling, that's my TV. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. said, it's your TV any other time. I said, but if it's got wrestling on there, that's my TV. <laughs> that's awesome. Now, well, let me, I got to stop you real quick. Now, at 21 is when you first really just started liking wrestling, or you liked it before that, but this was a moment. Oh, I, I, I liked it whenever it was, I was 12. Yeah, and then okay. my uncle, he came in, and, you know, I used to watch uh, uh, watch it with my uncle. And then he came in one day, and he goes, oh, that, that stuff's fake. And yeah. I was like, oh, now now I wanted to know how it, you know, why is it calling and so it Randy thing? Savage and uh, Lenny Poffo, you'd say, kind of were your inspirations? Yes, yes. yes. That's okay. awesome. Matter okay. of fact, one of the last matches that uh, uh, he, he refed for me. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, so he was... Uh, he come into, uh, I was doing the Joker at the time, and uh, Lanny said, don't you think, and he was talking to Pete, and uh, you know who Pete is. So anyway, uh, he's talking to Pete, and uh, uh, so Pete, you know, tells me, he says, Lanny wants to know why you're doing the uh, uh, Joker character. You, you think you get more run out of uh, the world champion. And I was yeah. like, well, you know, it's, you know, I'm just having fun now. And so he explained yeah. it to Glenn, you know, he's just having, you know, it's, it's, it's a relief for him. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, so then he comes in and, uh, I'm wrestling Kevin Zion and I've wrestled him many times before. I think so he, knew, he, he knew all my tricks, you know, so I was trying to apply these tricks to him, you know, and, right. and he wasn't putting me over at all. So I rolled out of the ring and I tell Pete, you know, I was like, uh, Lucky, and I tell Lucky, I said, go over there and uh, put your knee up and grab the top rope, and that's all you should have to do. Yeah. So he, he goes over there, and, and uh, Lanny and Kevin are staying with me, you know, and they're, you know, telling me, you know, get in the ring, get in. And yeah. so Pete gets over there, and he gives me this question, look, he says, you know, and he shrugs his shoulder. And, and I just <laughs> raise, you know, push my hand up, and, and I tell him, 
get up, you know, with, with a hand motion. <laughs> and uh, Lanny and, and Kevin turned around and they see he was coming in the ring and I mm-hmm. slid under the rope so slick and I punched the, the, the snot out of Kevin's eye on back of his head just as hard as I could. <laughs> I went to put the food to him. I was like, well, you ain't going to get away from me now, you, you little shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so by the time we got done, um, I controlled the whole match. And then, uh, so Lanny comes back in the dressing room and he goes in and he waits until I get all my pain off. Everybody leaves the dressing room and he comes over and he says, Mike, he said, uh, I've never seen anybody, you know, you know, control the whole match, you know? And, uh, he says, you know, I just appreciate you. And, and, uh, whenever you need a, a referee, uh, you know, you go ahead and you, you, you can call me anytime. That's cool, and, man. That's and cool. I was like, you know, coming from you, you know, that, that, that was just, you know, yeah. you know, you know, bring, you know, and he right. goes, I didn't mean it to to bring it to you like that. He says, uh, I know, you know, how good you are, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know how good you are. He said, right. I told, I want you to know, I know how good you are too. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so nice. that was, you know, that was, you know, pretty cool. And then I, so I wrestled Anthony Ingram, you know, um, Mm-hmm. Oh, Nimrod. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here, Carrier Mills, and uh, so Lanny's roughing that match too, mm-hmm. and uh, so now I'm the baby face, mm-hmm. and uh, I come, and and uh, of course it's my home crowd, you know, so they pop right. for me, you know, and they're, you know, Anthony's giving them a bunch of, you know, crap, and yeah, and uh, so uh, I get in the ring, and he goes, uh, and Lanny tells me, he says, uh, well, this isn't like a normal wrestling match. You know, this, you know, you, know, you got your people here, you know, behind you. You know, he said, I said, and I told him, I says, well, I'll have them sleeping before, you know, we get done. <laughs> and so he started laughing, you know, and, and uh, so as, as soon as... <laughs> As soon as it started, uh, Anthony goes, I bet that fat old lady there is your friend. And I was like, yes, he's my friend, and she's my friend, and she's my friend. And he slapped me across my face just as hard as he could. And I mean, it's the sound just went ignited. And before yeah. his fingers come off of my chin, I done had him pop back. And I mean, we went to work, you know, just, you know, beating it up. <laughs> and uh, so Lanny jumps back and I mean, just, you know, freaking out, you know, and he give us all kinds of room and we, we was on the floor. We was in the ring. We was all over the place. Yeah. And uh, so, so the finish is, uh, he's going to suplex me through the table. And so, so I grab him, I grab him under his arm and I pick him up and he's got the table out there. Mm-hmm. And I and I leave with him, and he goes, "We ain't gonna make it." <laughs> we <don't> make it. <laughs> so you, because he said it out there, and, and yeah. I had the legs, you know, and uh, you know, and, it and was I off broke the ring through the, the floor. Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. It was in the middle of the ring, oh, oh. on the other side of the ring. So the I came off. Just, the, yeah, off of the second. Uh, I got you. Off okay. of the second. Top we ain't gonna rope, make yeah. it. Okay, no, okay, actually, now I got it was it. off of the top. It was yeah. off of the top rope. Yeah. So we, we come crashing down through the table and uh, Lanny counts. <laughs> of course, Anthony's shoulders aren't down, you know, but he, he counts, you know, and he, you know, so I win. Mm-hmm. And uh, we get back in the dressing room and uh, Lanny walks right by me and he's he's deep in thought. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, my God, you know, m- maybe that table was just a little bit over the edge. Mm-hmm. And then I got to thinking, I was like, no, no. Uh, macho man, you know, used to, you know, use a table pile drive, you know, uh, yeah, who was Memphis, Lawler. yeah, 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 <laughs> I, what the heck was. <laughs> I was like, you know, that's, I, I think, you, I think we're good. So yeah. he sits over there and he's, and he's rewinding in, in his brain mm-hmm. and then he comes back over and I'm, I'm finished changed. And, uh, he, he comes back over and he goes, Mike, I'm, I'm going to tell you, he said, this was great. This was great. This was great. And he says, when, when you finished him up with, you know, the, through the table, he said, dude, that was awesome too. He says, uh, anytime you want me to, to ref for you, he says, I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm just, I'm available. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Okay. So, you know, the, so, yeah, that's cool. So, so, you know, to make my hero, you know, yeah, you know, I've, one of my biggest fans, you know, but by, by the time I was all done, and uh, yeah, you know, it was it was around the world, yeah, yeah, man. 
Can't take that away. Uh, But let's rewind a minute, man. Go back to, okay, so let's get to how you got into business and, uh, you know, how did it get going? How did you do that? Okay, now I'm I'm out in Nashville. I was building the South Central Bell Building. Okay, uh, yeah, Batman Batman Building. building. Mm. Yeah, I got on the first floor and, uh, you know, that was a a trick. (laughs) So I moved to Nashville and I call my buddy Wild Bill Dickerson up, and um, he, he's a, a bus driver. He, he used to drive bus for uh, Reba McIntyre. Okay. And, uh, you know, he, he finally ended up, you know, driving the bus for Reba McIntyre. I knew him a long time before he ever drove the bus for Reba McIntyre, but he, he drove a bus for everybody in the world. Um, so, uh, so whenever I moved to, to Nashville... I was like, I just need a place to stay for one night. And and he says, you know, Mike, you you can stay in my house, in, you know, anytime you want you. Mm-hmm. I said, just need one night. You know, I'm, I've got enough money, you know, to get me through, you know. Mm-hmm. So then I just, you know, so I spent there one night and then I uh, got up the next morning and he goes, uh, Mike needs a job. What are we going to get him a job? And uh, so everybody, you know, and his, their band members, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're guitar players, you know with the bands around town and stuff. And, uh, so, um, one of them said at the warehouse, they, they've got jobs at the warehouse. And the other guy says Kroger's, you know, their Kroger's is hiring. And Bill looks at him and he goes, no, he ain't working at no damn warehouse and no Kroger's. He says, look at him. He <laughs> says, he's, he's, he wants a man job. <laughs> and, and Bill tells me, he says, you go downtown. And you walk around there, uh, there's a big, huge pit in the middle of Nashville. He says, you just walk around there and uh, you ask for John. And I said, well, who's John? He says, I don't know who no damn John is. He says, but there's going to be a John there. And he's going <laughs> to give you a damn job. <laughs> if you just walk around a couple of times, you know, so I get down there and I walk around you know, a few times and I'm, I'm trying to get a hard hat to go down in the pit. Yeah, and uh, my buddy, uh, well, my boss, at the, uh, you know, before he was my boss, he uh, his name is Dewey. He comes over and he, and he says, uh, "What do you want to go down to the pit for?" And uh, I says, "Well, John's getting ready to give me a job down there." And he grabbed me by the arm and he drove me over to his truck. He says, "You fill out this paperwork, son. You don't want to go down in that pit. We're going up this." We're going, we're building this thing up. <laughs> and I was uh-huh. like, oh, hell yeah, that's what I'm all about, you know. Uh-huh. So, uh, so uh, he hired me, and uh, as soon as he hired me, then I was a little bashful. You know, I would never stand up for myself and everything, you know. I'd you not can't let be bashful and run. bashful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, I, so I let everybody run me over and stuff. And then I seen, uh, you know, I'm I, probably about two years been working there for a, for a long time, and then uh, a buddy of mine threw his glasses across the floor because my boss made him mad, mm-hmm. and so I thought he quit. And I was like, and I was like, man, Bert, why did you make him quit? And you, you you know it's a hard enough you know time to get people to you know get up on this building. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, go find him, go find him. Don't make you know, don't let him quit. So I go down there and I found him, mm-hmm. and uh, so I. I uh, I was telling him, I was like, you ain't quitting, are you? He says, no. He says, I just, I was like, well, I, I seen you throw that stuff down, you know, and got all mad and stuff. And I thought you was going to quit. He says, no, but you've seen what I've done. And he says, what you need to do is start doing the same thing. You mm-hmm. need to start throwing shit now. And uh, so I started, you know, <laughs> so the first time I'd done it, I was, you know, uh, Ragu was chewing. I had three bosses on the Batman building. Uh-huh. And and I, I I did work for everybody else, but, you know, I, I had three bosses. But I would yeah. slam that stuff down, and uh, the Ragu was chewing me out, and I turned around, and I said, look here, old man. <laughs> and he's an old biker dude, you know. And I, I chew his ass out back, you know. And uh, so, so then I started becoming the bully. So I was bullying these guys. And then, so, uh, so then they, they go, well, wait, you wait lightning. He's a lot younger than you. And he's just as big as you are. And, and uh, as soon as lightning gets here, you know, he's going to take over this building. Okay. So, so I, I come to work one day and, and I, you know, and I'm, and I tell him, I says, I can't wait to meet the man, you know, I, I hope, you know, he's, 
you know, good and smart anyway. So, so whenever I come to work that morning, um, there's nobody on the ground to ride the elevator up with me. So uh-huh. I get on the elevator and the, the elevator guy, you know, he's, you know, shuts the doors and he kind of chuckles and he takes uh-huh. me up to the, you know, to the 15th floor and I you open the door and there he is. He, it's lightning. <laughs> and I walked off the elevator and I said, I guess you're lightning, you know, and they're standing behind him, you know, just like, you know, they got his back, you know. <laughs> this sounds like a fucking movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. So I told him. I told him, I said, I said, come on over here and, and we got this uh, wire spool right here. You know, we'll arm wrestle, you know, see who's, <laughs> who's the bad man on the on the block, you know, over the top. So, so, yeah. So so I beat him right arm, mm-hmm. and I turn around and I beat him left arm. <laughs> and I and this is what I told him. I said, now you can sit over there with all them sissies <laughs> and not, not meaning sissies, but, you know, sure. yeah. and and uh and I'll treat you just like I, I treat them. I mm-hmm. said, or if you if you step around this table and you stand here right beside me, we own this building. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he got up and he walked around that spool and he stood there right beside me. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> and and I felt all of the air go out of these guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, now there's two of him. <laughs> so me and him was a team, you know, and, and we would run, you know, run around. We pick up heavy, heavy stuff, you know, and we carry yeah. all that shit everywhere. Right. But uh, he, so. So then, where yeah. does that translate into how you got into wrestling? No, well, that's that's how I, I stayed in shape. You know, I, oh. I did go to the gym, but 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 I was always done concrete work. You know, ever since I was young, always you know looking yeah. forward to to that opportunity. Yeah. yeah. And now it's close enough. And then I met uh, uh my buddy Marty Gilbert. He's uh-huh. a stagehand sound director, and uh-huh. uh, so so then uh, we uh, is that in Nashville the stagehand. 40 local 46. Yeah, yeah, the state, yeah, the stage hand local. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was part uh, I of I the, the local. I, I worked for them a few times. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so I was part of the, the local and, uh, Marty was a sound engineer at the, uh, Opry house, the Grand yeah. Ole Opry, whatever. Yeah. And, uh, so then uh, he got me uh, in a gig over at uh, Nashville, and he says, you can't get paid or, you know, you won't be paid for it. And he says, but if you drag some cords around, I can get you in the back door. Uh-huh. So we get over there, and, and, and I'm following him around. And uh, as Jeff Jarrett walks by me, uh-huh. uh, Marty stopped in front of me and turned around. He says, I thought you wanted to be a wrestler. And uh-huh. I said, I did. And he uh-huh. says, well, don't you think that that's the man to talk to? <laughs> and I was like, I never thought about that, but yeah, you know, I, I, so I talked to Jeff and, and he said, uh, be down there, uh, Sunday, uh, $20 and get you three hours of, uh, wrestling training. Mm-hmm. So, so I, uh, what year is that? 93. 93. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I, I tell Marty, I was like, oh my God, you know, it's, it's a Sunday. This it's going to be Sunday. Uh, now I married my ex-wife the 4th of July in 86. Mm-hmm. So every 4th of July kind of sucked around, you know, whenever it come around, you know, so now mm-hmm. I'm, you know, instead of celebrating, you know, I had, you know, yeah, you know, it, it, it sucked. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. so, uh, so that Sunday was the 4th of July. Mm. And I was like, damn, they're not going to be open. You know, it's, it, they're not really going to be open. So I, I go down. Marty tells me, he says, well, we'll just go down there and see if they're open, you know, and if they are, then, you know, you can hang out and I'll, you know, leave you there and I'll pick you up in three hours. Mm. He drives me down there and, uh, they are, they're open. And I was like, oh my God. Mm. So, uh, I turned the 4th of July, 1986, all back around in 1993, Mm -hmm. the 4th of July, is the Colorado kid's birthday. That's the first time that I stepped foot in the wrestling ring. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. So, so, so it, 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 you know, now it's, now it's my birthday. (laughs) That is super. Hell with everything else. (laughs) It's my birthday, boy. (laughs) So, 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 uh, Jeff Jarrett wasn't there, but Mm -hmm. Tony Falk was. Mm -hmm. So I bumped a few times for Tony Falk. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, and Tony said, where did, where have you done this before? 
Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I've never done this before. You know, this is my first time ever in a wrestling ring. He says, yeah. well, you've done it in the backyard or something. He said, I, and I told him, I said, well, you know, I've always studied, you know, how to fall down and stuff, you know, and yeah. taking backdrops in the mud puddles and stuff like that. But, you know, <laughs> never in the wrestling ring, you know, <laughs> we wear a mud puddle out. I, mean, I there, love that. There, there'd funny. be no water <laughs> left in that mud puddle. <laughs> <laughs> that perfect, that's perfectly you taking backdrops in mud puddles. I love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so he, he told me, he said, uh, I'm going to make a prediction right now. He says, I'm going to, I'm going to predict you're going to be the world heavyweight champion, you know, <laughs> one week, one time in your life. And, and, uh, and, uh, I was like, well, you know, I just, you know, I just, you know, want to be, you know, you know, a $50 beat me up, you know, is what I call <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. a job or that, you know, guy, you know, that, and, uh, and he goes, no, you, you're not, you, you don't have that career for you. He says, yeah. uh, you, you're going straight to the top. So, mm. uh, was it two, three years later? Then I beat Jerry Lawler, and I'm sitting in the dressing room, and I have no wonder your head's so big. Tony Falk crowned you champion the first day he seen you. That's so oh yeah. Big. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Paducah, awesome. Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so right, go ahead, man. I love you. Go ahead. So, so anyway, uh, so uh, so Jerry drops the belt to me. And, uh, uh, so Tony walks in the dressing room and I hadn't seen Tony, you know, since the first day, well, maybe, uh, yeah, I wrestled him on TV the first time. That's when Bert uh, grabbed my foot and Tony beat me yeah. and I was like, son of a bitch, <laughs> you know, so I chased Bert around anyway. So, you know, that was the last time pretty much that I'd seen Tony Falk, you know, when it'd been, you know, a couple of years. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, I'm in the dressing room and I've got the world belt sitting there right there beside me. I, you know, I always polish it up and everything. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so Tony walks in the dressing room and he looked, looked at me and he looked down at the belt and he goes, I want everybody in this dressing room to know that I predicted that, <laughs> uh, that you know, he gonna be the world champion, and I was the first one to predict it, you know. And I, I was he just there. I was everybody the one to know. told him to his face he was going to be the champion. <laughs> yeah, I told him on August thirty first, nineteen two. Yeah, he gave yeah. me the date and everything. From Paducah, Kentucky. That's a shoot, Pally. That's a shoot, Pally. Yeah. That's the shoot, Pally. Yeah, I gotta I ask you this. Like yeah, we love Tony too. So <laughs> before this, now, and I'm sorry, I don't want to keep you off track here and it kind of makes sense now that you brought it up a little bit but when did you get named the colorado kid actually on the bell building okay there's okay. all kinds of mics on the bell building and i why did i leave beautiful colorado springs to come ah. to nashville, <laughs> nashville oh my god i just because i was you know i was in that wrestling world mode you know mm-hmm. i was meant to break into the wrestling business but Boy, I talk so much shit about damn Nashville because, I mean, it's nasty. You know, whenever back in 90, 92, when I started working on the Bell Building, uh, that's whenever uh, it was tore up downtown Nashville. Yeah. I mean, they were tearing everything up. The streets was tore up. I mean, just you know, just messed up. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I always talked about Nashville, Nashville. And uh, <laughs> everybody's name was Mike. Yeah. So they go, we need to come up with a, with a nickname for you. And they said, we, we're going to call you Colorado. And so uh, so I, I got me a girlfriend at, at the time, and uh, she was like 19. Mm-hmm. And uh, she would introduce me mm-hmm. as uh, Colorado. <laughs> so, so she used to be Girl Friday for Porter Wagner. Oh, uh, yeah. So okay. Whenever I started working for, for the stagehand local... <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, Marty goes, hey, Andy, which is Conrad's son. I don't know if you guys know all these people, but Conrad is the main guy over the the stage local, you know, okay. in uh, Opryland. Okay. Uh, and uh, so anyway, uh, Andy's his son, and he says, Andy, Andy, come here. He says, this is Colorado. He goes, you're Colorado? And I said, well, that's what my friends call me. And I give him this look, and he goes, <laughs> Oh my God, Porter Wagner hates your guts. <laughs> and I was like, hates my guts? Why does he hate my guts? He says, because he's been trying to 
uh, get with that girl and uh, she won't <laughs> talk nothing about, you know, she just talks about you. Just call her out of this and call her out of that. <laughs> and, and she won't pay him a never mind, you know. And, oh, well, you know so man, you outcome Porter Wagner. And Porter was packing, I've heard, so, you know. Well, that's what I heard, too. <laughs> Marty yeah. said they bring pictures in there, you know, and he'd throw it down there. On the, he says, I was fishing this weekend. Look what I hooked. And he'd throw it down there, and it'd be a picture of a, you know, <laughs> like a music rap. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's take a quick time out and get a word from one of my dope ass sponsors. And we'll be right back with more live and in color with Wolfie D. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. Hey folks, this is Wolfie D here. And if you are looking to buy or sell a home in Tennessee or Southern Kentucky, you're going to want to call my buddy, the rock star realtor, Benji Bowie. And you say, Wolfie, how do I get in touch with this rock star? Well, you can call him directly at 615-390-8216. You can go to his website, BowieHomes.com. That's B-U-I-E Homes.com. Or you can email him at BenBowie34 at gmail.com. When you need a home, you need the rock star realtor. Benji is a member of Exit Realty's Garden Gate team in Gallatin, Tennessee. Support for Live and in Color with Wolfie D is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped recently launched the Ultimate Men's Hygiene Bundle, the Performance Package. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code WOLFIE at manscaped.com. If my math's correct, that's about 8 million balls. When did you meet Bert? Let's talk about Bert for a minute. Now, I met Bert. Uh, I was security guard over at... Uh, Nashville. Mm -hmm. I, I got into the wrestling business and uh, Jeff yeah. Jarrett went to uh, WWE and uh, oh my God, I was growing a beard and uh, Bert came out there and uh, he gave me that look and he's like, you know, why do you grow that beard? And I was like, well, <laughs> you know, I just you know want to be a bad guy, you know, and want to be a heel. And, yeah. Uh, he goes, he goes, no, he says, no, that's, we're, we're looking for baby faces. What, what you mm -hmm. need to do, shave that beard off. Mm -hmm. So, so I did, I shaved the beard off, you know, and, and I left my mustache on, but, mm -hmm. and, uh, so, uh, he was like, you know, and, and I thought he was talking about, we need baby faces, like, because I got a baby face. Right. <laughs> right. I, I was, I was 29 when I, when I started wrestling Yeah. and, and Bert pushed me as a 21 year old for four yeah. years. Yeah, I had four twenty first birthdays, <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't have no qualm about it. Next year is going to be twenty first day. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Is, yeah, I don't doubt that one bit. <laughs> <laughs> I love me and him. Kind of had a it's like a love hate. Like I, I liked Bert. Bert always used me, you know that. But then we also would have our we'd have a little argument here and there about what this and that and other. Uh, but I hey, love Bert. Hey, Man, Bert was a 
Bird was a fucking hustler, man. And people can say what they want about Bird. Oh, yeah. But Bird was a fucking yeah. hustler, man. And he did not yes, get out of the wrestling business. And he, I mean, he did and enough he to fucking money. support himself. Yeah. 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 He still made money. I mean, you know. Yeah. What do you think his legacy is? Mike, what do you think? Like, if you were to just say, okay, one, you know, no, you don't have to be a couple words, but I'm just saying, what do you think Bert's ultimate legacy is? Well, he was a promoter after everybody was gone. Yeah. He, yeah. he you know, he, to, to yeah. me, he was the, the last promoter pretty much. Um, yeah. The last of the guys. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. 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 I think that's a great one. Yeah, because, I mean, I got to work for him, and it's funny. He's given me that look before, too. I'm very Caucasian, Mike. I, I, I barely tan in the summer, and I'm wearing a sheet gimmick on me. And he says, well, you do all right out there, but we got to get you a better gimmick. That ain't working. And I'm I'm like, okay. And then Dutch Mantel tells me the same thing. And I'm like, maybe I'm not. I, maybe I don't have the right gimmick. <laughs> but I know that look that he gave you. I know that exact look because he's given oh it Oh, my to God. Yeah. He, yeah. he gave me that look many, many, many times. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me ask you this, because I, I went through the same thing, man. Uh, like, you know, PG-13 being Randy's guys in the USWA and all that stuff. And then on top of that, I rode with Randy everywhere. And, you know, uh, fucking Wolfie, fucking Randy's guy, you ride around with the office, him, Frank, blah, blah, blah. Fucking Randy, Wolfie, you know, just sexual shit, they would say. But all ribs. And it was like Tommy and shit like that. Tommy Ridge, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'd get ribbed mercifully. And I know you did too on that end of it. But I yeah. know that, like, uh, I, I'm, I don't know what Randy is, but it ain't gay. I can tell you that. Um, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I and mean, we all know Bert's deal, but I mean, talk about having to deal with that. You know what I mean? Well, uh, I'm going to tell you. He told me first. He says, you know, they're going to call you gay. And mm. I was like, I don't give a shit what they call me. Yeah. <laughs> I said, you know, you, you just, you know, you, you know, you just don't, you know, you don't pick and choose, you know, for me, Yeah. you know, I pick and choose you, you know, and, and if you're a good friend of mine and, you know, I'm, I'm a loyal friend to you, you know, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. and he was, I mean, he was, you know, great to me for many years and yeah. uh, then, uh, and he did screw me a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> he got over on me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's clear that up. He got over on you. That's all. Yeah, he got over it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't screw me. <laughs> Not in that sense. I mean, he did, but yeah. And, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, is the, that is the sentence of the show right there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, he did. He helped you out a lot. I know in your career, getting you some. The WCW shots and all that kind of stuff, and you know, oh, yeah. I, he helped a lot of those. Uh, you know, that little group of guys right there. That you know, some of them went on to do some bigger stuff, and a lot of guys just wanted to go. Hey, security hey, or hey I've got to tell. I've yeah. got to tell you this story. Please. And Bert, yeah. Bert uh, got me in the back in the dre- uh, uh, back of the uh, catfish house. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we used to wrestle in the pole barn out there by Ed's Catfish Shack, you know, in uh, Jonesboro, Arkansas. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, Rocky, my via, was in the backyard, Rock. and he was, yeah, he so he was signed. You know, the WWE couldn't figure out what to do with him, so right. he was going to quit. And uh, so Bert had me out there talking, you know, to the rock, you know, about don't quit, don't quit, you know, just maintain your spot, you know, and, uh-huh. and uh, you, they'll figure out, you know, where, where you're, where you're headed. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, I had to talk him, you know, down out of it, you know, so, and uh-huh. uh, so, so that was, you know, that was me and Bert talking the rock into, you know, his, yeah. his career nowadays. You know? Yeah, that's <laughs> amazing. Him, giving him some encouragement. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, you've you've got so many accomplishments. I was just looking at some of them. The USWA Rookie of the Year in 94. You worked that was, was that a thing? Was that a thing? I never heard of that before. I think they made that for you. Yes, it was. It was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was my thing. <laughs> yeah, they, they there you go. That's all they that had, matters. They had to label. They had to label me, you know, as something, you know. So they they pushed me yeah. as a rookie over here, and and uh, <laughs> I had a I had a uh, Leon Downs. He he'd been working for like three years, you know, and, and so they was going through the rookie of the year, and I I beat Leon Downs uh, everywhere we went. <laughs> there you go. So did everybody. 
<laughs> but I mean, you're you're working Lawler and Dundee for the U.S. with the U.S. Not for you were you were holding the USWA title, and then you end up you know doing some stints in WCW. You actually end up working Cactus Jack. You work Dean Malenko, Johnny Swinger on WCW TV. Then you end up with the NWA World Title, man. And before you was Sabu. He held that before you. No, you, no, no, no. Uh, I, I I worked. Uh, I won the belt in the tournament. Jerry Sabu Flint. took it away from me. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And then I took it back away from Sabu. That's what it is. Okay. So, and you. then Steve Carino, he, he took it away from me. <laughs> yeah, and, and you guys had some battles, man. Those were great matches. I, I oh, recommend oh everybody God. to go watch those matches because y'all worked <laughs> together like really well. Y'all had great chemistry. Yeah, yeah. And then you end up going to Japan working for Zero One with Steve Carino. I'm getting to yeah. a point here, and I appreciate that. Now, how was it working in Japan? Was that that was your first time going to Japan? Oh right? yeah, oh yeah. Uh, and um, I had to make Steve Carino wear one of my jackets so we looked like a tag team. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so I burnt my damn lungs up whenever I run around. I, I thought it was like fog, and uh, but it ended up being smog. And so I, I, mm. I, I, I toasted my lungs. Man, so I couldn't breathe right for the rest of the you know the the trip. And uh, so I was having to fight for air. And uh, mm. so, <laughs> did you so did we, you enjoy go over? Yeah, we we go over as uh, intercontinental. Tag, tag team champions, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and and we ended up dropping them, you know, while we were there. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy, he 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 uh, grabs me around the waist, and uh, and I and I told him uh, because I don't speak Japanese, and the guy doesn't speak Japanese either. So we got an interpreter. Yeah. So uh, so he he wants me to go behind him, and then he's going. He wants he wants me to go behind him, mm-hmm. and then he's going to roll through. And and uh, get me in an ankle lock, and uh-huh. uh, then I'm supposed to tap out. So uh-huh. I told him, I says, if I if I don't know where to go, I said you grab me first. I'll reverse it. Just the you know, yeah. I'll, I'll go behind you, right? You know, and then you got me. Yeah. And then uh, so he so that's what ha- ended up happening because I was lost in the match. He he went and grabbed me, and then I reversed it and grabbed him, and then he locked me down. I'm face down, and and. Uh, Screaming in pain, he's uh, twisting my ankle. <laughs> I'm tapping, I'm tapping, and I'm I'm done, you know. So yeah. But the next night, uh, we get there, and uh, me and Steve are working a, a smaller tag team, and uh, the 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 last very last move, the guy jumps off of the top rope, and well, I tag Steve in, and and Steve goes, you know, running and uh, over to the corner. And the kid jumps up on the top rope, and he's getting ready. And he jumps off, and he grabs Steve in the around the neck with his legs. He's getting ready to do a hurricanrana, and I've seen it all happening. So I I run out of my corner, and I jump up just to meet him. And Steve's power bombing him as I'm driving him down through the mat. And uh, and and as we're coming down, and I was like, damn, I I really jumped this high, you know, <laughs> like eight feet. Eight feet Superman, and you know, and and uh, we crashed down to the ground. And uh, on the way down, I was like, I'm going to be uh, too heavy on him. I said, I've got to back off some pressure. Mm-hmm. So I backed off some pressure and popped my left shoulder loose mm-hmm. and dislocated my left shoulder. And and uh, oh my god! So that was the last match of the last day. <laughs> <laughs> and I tore everything up, and I was oh my god! Oh man! <laughs> Damn. That's a, so then, when I get ended. back from when I get back from Japan, then now I've been on an airplane for fourteen hours. I get off of the airplane, we get in the car, we drive straight to uh, Nashville uh, Arena, and I get out and uh, start wrestling with Jerry Lawler. And I have got the jet lag like <laughs> so you did crazy. You shoulder, I mean, just you didn't have to yeah, go to and my shoulders. <laughs> no, no, I didn't ever go to the hospital for the okay. shoulder. You know, so but, it, but it did. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, gotcha. so. Uh, so uh, I had to wrestle Jerry Lawler that night, and uh, and and Jerry says uh, Mike just didn't seem like himself tonight. And uh, <laughs> so so Bert told Jerry, he says, well, well, hell, he just got off an airplane. He flew back from Japan. He says, don't, don't you think the jet lag is you know caught up with you? <laughs> and he, yeah. he goes, well, I never thought about that. And I was like, I was like, hell yeah, I had to go down, <laughs> lay down, and I, I mean, I was messed up for like a week. 
Oh, oh man. man. I bet. Yeah. And then did you end up wrestling in China? Yes. Yes. Actually, I was the very first Ameri- wrestling match in, yeah. in China. Wow. Uh, and uh, so uh, <laughs> you could look in the books. Yeah. Uh, the Colorado Kids' very first wrestling match, American wrestling match in China. And I wrestled Who Jeff wrestled? Justice. Who was it? And uh, Jeff Justice. Jeff Justice, okay. All right. So, uh, so uh, we go out there. And, justice uh, for China you know, or Justice for America? <laughs> no, Justice for, for America. Uh, Jeff, justice for America. <laughs> but we go out there and, and, and we're good and tight, you know, and I, and I tell him, you know, I was like, hey, you want to go out there? They ain't got a card together, you know, do you want to just, you know, open the show? And he goes, yeah, I don't mind, you know. I was like, hey, you give that match to me and Justice, you know. So they go, all right, we got the first match down, and then they figured out everything else. But it was like, you know, fresh snow you know it's it's like a fresh piece of and it's the first you're you're the first skater or skier on there you know so yeah. i mean it's you know it's, <laughs> that's yeah. crazy yeah so so we we went out there and we wrestled and uh we were good and tight on each other you know and and mm-hmm. uh so whenever we get back from uh here's my question here's my question real quick did the okay. people since it was the first time seeing it did they know how to react yes they did Okay. That's awesome. Yes, they did. Uh, uh, but but uh, that was me controlling them, you know. Yeah. yeah. You know. So, uh, but, but, you know, I got the ups and downs. Um, so, anyway, I get my picture in the paper, in the newspaper, the next morning. And uh, so, so they go, hey, we made the paper. And then they said, oh, it's somebody just doing a drop kick. And I was like, well, I do a drop kick. <laughs> yeah, let me get that paper. Let me get that paper. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, Justice is is taking a drop kick from me, and his his face is out out of the picture. So he's you know he just got Justice on his leg. Uh-oh. So I was like, all right, give all the pictures to me, you know, because I because it was a perfect picture of me doing a drop kick, and I mean yeah. I'm nailing him in the face, and you could see on the back in the big screen, on uh-huh. the back how high I got, you know. So yeah, it was. Awesome. Uh, it I was, took yeah, that yeah, shit was, before. I know. <laughs> so anyways the next night or the so that night uh after we get all changed and everything we come out to the uh arena and we sitting in the bleachers mm-hmm. i was like what are we waiting on how come we're not you know going back to the apartment or the motel or whatever and uh they go well we're waiting on that guy to you know tear that wrestling ring down mm-hmm. And I was like, well, this is a no-brainer. I was like, yeah, everybody, you going to help me uh, help that man tear that wrestling ring down so we can get the hell out of here, you know? And uh, uh, and if you don't, I'll talk so much shit about you whenever I'm down there tearing that damn wrestling ring down. He, I said, you won't be able to stand it. Yeah. So I go down there, and I start helping tear the wrestling ring down. Uh-huh. So uh, I grab one of the posts, and I'm running it back. And... Uh, Wiener, the wrestling, uh, the crew guy, he goes, uh, Mike, put that down. That's 350 pounds. Mm-hmm. And I give him that look like, you know, hey, I, I know how to carry this shit, you know. So mm-hmm. I set the post down. And I run back and I grab another one, put it up on my shoulder. <laughs> and I'm running running back and, uh, and Wiener's hollering, you know, you're going to blow your damn back out. And I set that post down. <laughs> well, on on my way back to grab the third one, uh, Andy is, and uh, he's a big big monster kid, you know. He, he's yeah. all swelled up and stuff, and uh, so he goes here, help me. Uh, he's telling Justice, help me put this on my shoulder. He says Mike ain't gonna be the only one carrying this pole. <laughs> so he's he's on his way, and so I stop and I grab the first or you know the the last one, and I pass him and I set it down. And I'm helping him set his down. And he tells me, he says, Mike, how are you so strong? And I said, dude, I've been doing construction my whole life. Yeah. I said, if I don't know how to do anything, I know how to pick up and carry heavy stuff. Yeah. And uh, so the next night, I have to wrestle Andy. And he comes in, and he got a sad face, like somebody had killed his puppy. <laughs> and I was like, Andy, what what, what, are you, what are you looking so gloom for? And he goes, well, uh. I get to wrestle you tonight. And I says, well, that's good. And he goes, well, uh, they want me to go over. He says, but I'm going to let you go over because you're a lot stronger. And, you know, you, 
And I was like, no, Andy, don't do that. Do, do not do that. And I was like, you, you'll cheat us both out of $1,500. I'll be mad. Yeah. 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 So, uh, and I said, I said, I'll take care of it. I says, I'm, I'm, I'll save face. And I was, I was like, you know, uh, so I sat over there for a minute and I, and I thought about it and I come over and I told him, I says, this is how the match is going to go. I mm-hmm. says, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to body slam you. And I'm just making the motions with my arms. Yeah. I'm a body. Thing. So, uh, and I want you to tell me, come on, do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so as soon as I, you know, reach in and, and, uh, well, I told him first, you know, I says, I'm going to yeah. come to the wrestling ring. I'm going to have my robe on. They're going to pop because you know, the robe, when I pull my jacket off, you know, they're going to pop because you know, you know, I'm, I'm kind of built too, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, uh, I said, but when you come out, you're going to grab the next gear, you know, you're going to grab an, an, a different elevation. Mm-hmm. So then that's when I'm going to tell you, I'm going to body slam you. And mm-hmm. then, then you're going to tell me, you know, come on, do it. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I grab a hold of you, you grab me by my hair and my trunks and you sling me out this side. Mm-hmm. I said, and Andy, they're going to laugh at me. I said, but don't worry. I says, I'm going to say face in the end. <laughs> I says, uh, I'm going to dust myself off and I'm going to come back and, and I'm going to get in the ring and I'm going to tell them again, I'm going to body slam you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he tells me again, come on, give me a body slam. And, and, and I told him, I said, this time when I grab a hold of you, you double ax handle me and you throw me out on the opposite side. I want everybody to see everything. Yeah. So, you know, nobody's getting left out. Mm-hmm. So he throws me out and I said, and they're going to laugh again. I says, and I'm going to come up and I'm going to wipe my feet off. And then I'm going to tell you, I'm smarter than you. I'm going to body slam you. <laughs> and I'm going to come in the ring and you tell me you come on, get it, come on, get it. And then I'm going to gingerly, you know, like I'm going to, you know, and I'm going to keep my eye on you because, you know, done, done throwed me out of the ring twice. Mm-hmm. And just before I grab you, I'm going to punch you in the head a bunch of times. You run back to the ropes. I'm going to throw you off, give you a drop kick, a head shot. You hit the ropes and then I'm going to body slam you. And when I, when he come off the ropes, I'm back to my feet and I picked him up and I mean, he was so light. I took him around the world like an airplane spin and I body slammed him in the middle of the ring. Mm-hmm. And I told him, I says, I want you to count to three for me. I said, do it out loud right now. He goes, one, two. I said, you count to two. That will be sufficient. I said, you count to two just the way that you just did. I said, and then I want you to sit up just like the undertaker does. Uh, and I said, I'll have my back to you and I'll hear the crowd. Ooh, <laughs> because I'll have them up to here and they will be screaming. I says, and the bottom will drop out. Uh, and as soon as the bottom drops out, I'm going to turn around and then I'm going to fire you up and then you reverse whatever. And then you take me apart. However you want to take me apart. Yeah. And he finishes off to of the top rope. And, uh, as, as he finishes me off on the top rope and, uh, he's, he got me pinned one, two, three, he gets out. I mean, they're cheering the crazy place and he crawls out of the ring and he goes back into the dressing room. Mm-hmm. I stumble up to my feet and I, and I wave my finger. No, 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 no. I body slammed him and I'm doing my arms in, in the same manner. Yeah. Him. Dude, they popped just as loud for me because I just body slammed. I didn't say I beat him. I right. just said I was going to body slam him, and I did that. And they popped just as loud for me. And when I got back to the dressing room, he grabbed a hold of me, and he hugged me, and he squeezed me so hard. He goes, Mike, he says, oh, my God, they done everything that you said that they would do. Yeah, uh, old school one hundred and one, man. That's that sounds like what and you, that's the, it. you could take that and anywhere, and, and uh, yeah. it applies. I'm serious. Anywhere and, you and go, you, you, just like you know, we went to ECW. We really, I didn't I think I ever got hit by a chair while I was there. I just did some old school stuff and sped it up a little bit. Same with Mexico. Put some uh, Memphis into some lucha and uh, had fun with it. It always, it always works, man. Oh yes! Oh yeah! Yeah, it still does to this day. You just you know, a lot, of, a lot of them are doing it. Seems like some of them are trying to come back to it a little bit. 
Uh, but, you know, it's the fact that there's a thing where nobody listens now. And that's just society in general. The youth don't listen, unfortunately. But right. if there's any youth listeners, I love you. Uh, God <laughs> bless you. But we know what our demographics are, so there might be one or two of you. Uh, so, anyway, um, <laughs> Jimmy. I got it. Before before we end this here today, and thank you again, Mike, for everything, I've got to ask, tell me about working Cactus Jack. I've got to hear about that. Okay, so the first time that I wrestled Cactus Jack, my mom and dad – um, came to the house or came to the show that night. And, um, uh, w- whenever I first started wrestling, they, they, uh, told me, they said, if you do that fake stuff, he says, we won't walk across the street, you know, to watch you do that stuff. Mm-hmm. I had them traveling six hours in one direction to watch <laughs> me do this stuff. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> So, but she shows up, you know, and, uh, she's, you know, she's always been telling me, you know, since I was 12, got into the wrestling, you know, scene Mm -hmm. and uh, she's telling me how fake it is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so (laughs) cactus, me and uh, me and cactus ate lunch that afternoon. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm figuring he's college educated because he spoke really well, you know? So I'm thinking, you know, he's, you know, he's college, you know? Yeah. So, but then, then as soon as they rang the bell, he stepped out of his world and into mine, and he walked out there and he punched me in the side of my head so hard, <laughs> I almost passed out. Oh my god! And I, and I was like, and I was like, you don't think I will step up with you? And I punched him just as hard as he punched me, hoping that he would pass out. <laughs> and then it was a fight. And yeah. now, I mean, we was beating the snot out of each other. Uh-huh. So then uh, uh, halfway through the match, he picks up a metal chair and he hits me like three times in the back with him. <laughs> That's when my mama come down out of the, out of the uh, concession stand and she's For making shoot. her way through the, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's on her way down. And I told Cactus Jack, I said, yeah, you've done it now. My mama's coming down here to whoop your ass. <laughs> 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 well, Bert and, and my dad cut her off before she could get down there to whip old Cactus's ass. <laughs> you know, I was like, God oh, damn. What are you doing? You know, let her go. <laughs> yeah, you're killing my gimmick. Come on. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, after the show's over, you know, I ended up beating Cactus, you know, and, and uh, mm-hmm. so I go up and I mean, I am beat to snot, you know, and I'm mm-hmm. just sitting there and I'm just like, war down. Mm-hmm. And my mom opens the dressing room door and she looks at me and uh, I said, <laughs> what, what are you doing? She says, I'm just checking on you. Uh-huh. I said, what are you coming down to the wrestling ring for, you know, whenever Jack was hitting me with that chair? He said, she said, uh, I was just wanting to check on you. You just make sure you're all right. She says, Michael, you turned white whenever that third time he hit you with that chair. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't going around with that damn chair, you know, I was just saying. Yeah. So anyway, uh, and I told my mom, I said, well, mom, you've been telling me since I was this tall. I said, this is, you know, it's, it's fake stuff. Mm-hmm. You out of everybody should know better than, you know, to believe that, you know, it's, <laughs> and she said, and she looked at me and, and it would give me one of the best compliments in the world. She goes, Michael. You make that shit look too real. <laughs> like, oh my God! That I was shit like, that yeah, one it was me. It wasn't me. It was Cactus Jack that made that shit look real. <laughs> I was fighting for my life. <laughs> yeah, he was beating the hell out of me, Mom. I can't believe, I can't believe you let two people hold you back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You you love love mom, mama. <laughs> yeah, I see how much you love me, mama. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen him recently, or have you seen um, Mick after that? Whenever he retired, whenever he retired, he come to Nashville, and then mm-hmm. uh, he so he he wanted to see me, you know, and I'm you know I I know him, you know, and, and I've seen him in WWE and stuff, but. Um, he he wanted me to come to his dressing room. So they was wrestling at the fairgrounds, uh, the auditorium at the fairgrounds. And I, you know, I, I, we didn't have that show that night. So, uh, I opened the back door of the, of the, uh, oh shit, of the building. Yeah. And Fair Cactus rough. opened, yeah. Cactus opens his dressing room door at the same time. And we both peek our heads out. And we both point, it's just like it was planned out, point at each other. And Cactus is saying, come here, come here, come here. 
So I, I, I run into the dressing room and, uh, he says, oh, my God. He says, uh, Mike, I never got to tell you this. He says, but but there was something about me and you. We clicked. There was something about it. He says, it just, you know, you, you know, you, you didn't give up and I didn't, you know, I mean, it, it, it was just something, you know, he says, why didn't you stay in WWE? Uh-huh. And, uh, well, because, you know, I was chasing Terry Taylor around. And he was going <laughs> back and forth and, and, uh. So, you know, ended up, you know, I was in WWE for a little while, and then I was, you know, back in WCW. And, right. At, uh, at odd times. It was a strange time for, you know. Yeah. WCW yeah, and it was. Like that. That was actually going to be one of my questions, so you just answered that. That was. <laughs> thank you for doing that, actually, because you read my mind, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> yeah. Hey, dude, listen here, man. We could probably sit here and you know go on for three or four hours, man. And uh, I, te- I technically like to keep my show uh, within my times. I, I got to get my times. Hit your times, man. Okay. Don't you, All right. Shit in. I love you, man. It's great to great to hear from you. And, you love me uh, too. Yes, I think man. we should do a part two of this yeah please yeah please. yeah oh yeah. i've got all kinds of other stuff to oh, know, talk we about will, we will definitely... Simon Shane Eaton. oh my god oh yes, yes it's all about him <laughs> that's, a, that's a part two in itself <laughs> yeah, we, yeah so yeah, we'll yeah. go ahead and plug it now you're coming back for a part two we'll figure out when and everything but uh so we'll keep the the fans and the listeners uh you know on suspense there for uh, <laughs> the next time of what other great stories you have man but it's been a blast man i've laughed and laughed absolutely uh, it's, it's been a fun hour here. Um, we appreciate you coming on, and I hope everything is going well for you and all that good stuff, man. Jimmy, uh, we're going to take a break, and you're going to come back and ask Wolfie D anything. Isn't that right? That's right. We're coming back with Ask Wolfie D Anything, man. I tell you. Never tell what they're going to ask, Mike. It's crazy sometimes. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, it's been nice talking to you. Wolfie, uh, I love you, brother. And uh, Yes, love you too, man. You too, Mike. Great. Yeah. You, and now, have you been, done many podcasts before? No. Uh, this is the first, well, actually, maybe one more. Yeah. And I don't remember when it was. I bet you're it's going to do really good. I, I really bet it will. You're a natural, man. You really are. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know my buddy, my buddy out there in uh, San Diego. He he paints the football helmets for uh, Snoop Dogg. Oh. And uh, you know, I used to go out there and, and do that gig. You know, like well, in the last couple of years. Uh-huh. And uh, so this year, I, I'm I'm not going to go out there. But he's always told me. He says, Mike, I want to I want to buy you a podcast. And he says, and, and set you all up and everything. He says, yeah. I just want. He says because uh, the people would just listen to you because yeah. you got that that voice, and I was like, "What what voice do I have? You know, <laughs> why do people want to listen to me? You know, and yeah. well, I look like Ernest T. Uh, uh, World. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, man. Come on now, uh, well, John Cena know. looks like him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. <yeah>. Anyway, <laughs> thank yeah. you, Mike. Thank you so much, and we'll be in, we'll be in touch, dude. And, uh, okay, I will uh, talk to you again, man. Like I said, great hearing from you, and uh, I had a fun time doing it, man. All Hope right, you're brother. doing good. Everything, all, all good. Yeah, in your man. World. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's 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 not perfect, but it ain't great in mine either. So, <laughs> 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 thanks, thanks Mike. But all right, good dude. We'll see. You. Okay. All right. Take care, buddy. Thank all you. Right. Okay, you got it. DJ, hit the music. Right, we are back with Ask Wolfie D anything, and man, I tell you, Colorado kid, Mike Rapata, he's awesome, dude. That was really yeah, cool. yeah. Don't you love his laugh? Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's just a cool guy, and he's always, you know, just he's always been around and done some awesome things. And it was really cool to hear his story and and get to know him a little better. Because, like I yeah. said. 
I worked on a few shows with him, but mostly it was, you know, kind of doing, you know how it is when you're in the locker room. You're not like, if you're not like riding, if you're not like car ride guys, you sometimes don't get to know everybody as well. So anyway, long story short, Colorado kid, awesome show. Hope y'all enjoyed that. Yeah. We also hope you enjoy these questions we're about to ask here. So the no. first, yeah, don't ask Wolfie. Yeah, no, ask I, said, I said, don't like Homer. Like, like, so it's ask Homer. Is that what we're doing? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <I'll> me. <laughs> All right. Well, this first one is from Facebook listener, Joey Cummings. And, and I think we did try to get a little more of an elaboration on this one, but he asked a question of, I want to hear a Terry Landale story. Yeah, I remember that was actually, sometimes it's you, sometimes it's me on that site who replied. Yeah. And that was me, uh, because I, 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 when I moved, the only time I met Terry Landell was, hell, if I met him back in the day, I don't remember it, but, but I met him uh, in like 2013 when I moved to Maryville, which is around Knoxville, and I mean, that's his area. I think I worked one show for him, and that was enough. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That was enough. (laughs) Yeah, it was a parking lot show. I don't like parking lot shows anyway, but yeah, uh, yeah. uh, it seems so generic and uh, just it just looks bad to me. Sure. But uh, (laughs) at any rate, (laughs) I know a lot of people didn't like Terry. Uh, I've heard a lot of things and and some people did. I heard he was pretty shady. And that's really all I know. He, 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 like I said, I worked one show and I came on and he had a little cable TV show. I did that for him. Um, cause when I first moved up there, you'd have thought that, uh, you know, Jesus had arrived the way he was acting with me, you know, like we had known each other for years and yeah. hey, buddy, hey buddy, hey buddy. So, right. Yeah. That's all I really know about him, man. I swear. I don't have a, a story. If, if there's something that I'm, forgetting that this person is hinting at brian uh right brian no. joey, joey joey cummings i know a brian cummings that's why i said that. yeah it's uh, okay but anyway yeah if there's something i'm forgotten please tell me <laughs> well <laughs> you know, know yeah let me ask you a question so sometimes when somebody is like that buddy buddy hey buddy yeah. i don't know it sets off like a red flag for me oh yeah uh, yeah sure I'm like standoffish immediately. I'm oh, like, okay, well, you know, I'd already, I had already heard story. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want. That doesn't help. It, yeah. what George, George South said we can't work a worker. We've been knowing that for years. So. Right, you cannot work a worker, and that's the truth. So, okay, the last name Landell. What's the story with that? Is that his shoot name? You think? And and it's just I, ironic that Buddy Landell. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure not his real name. Hell, I don't yeah. know. Like I said, right. I don't know a lot about the guy, man, but I do know it was he was kind of shady. <laughs> and the, the one show I did work for him, I worked Tracy. I think I told this before. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But uh, <laughs> so Tracy's just determined for me and his finish that my my son Raiden's mother uh, be included in the finish, and she has never been in the wrestling ring. She never come to the ring with anybody. <laughs> She ain't had a lick of experience in the, and, and really not athletic either. And uh, so, no, she could do this. She could do this. And it was just the deal where from the crowd, she's supposed to stand up, come like to the ring and underhand toss me a chain uh, in to me in the middle of the ring. <laughs> I'm yes. down and I think the ref was down. <laughs> well, she goes to throw it and she throws it over my head and out of the ring. <laughs> my like, God. <laughs> So I just didn't miss a beat. I slid out, grabbed it, slid back in quick as could be. And, you know, it, yeah, it didn't look good, but it really didn't mess up the finish. You know what I'm saying? Because I got sure. it so quick. Yeah. But Tracy, <laughs> and he was the one that begged her to do it. And she kept saying, I've never done it. I don't want to. I don't want to. He starts <laughs> getting on to her. <laughs> How'd you throw that out of the ring? I, don't know. I said, Tracy, Tracy, she didn't want to do it, man. Yeah. <laughs> really cool. So one thing I do know about Tracy is he does like to use a manager, whether it's against him or with him. That's awesome. I love that about Tracy. The other thing is, is I know he ain't afraid to get on somebody because I saw him. I saw him get all over Brewster Fetter one night and I felt bad because I was supposed to be in that role. But I've told this story a million times. I don't want to tell it again, but I I wasn't able to manage Tracy that night. And I'd managed him a couple times before. And unfortunately, I had not was not able to manage him that night. And Brewster 
Twitter unfortunately messed some stuff up and I felt bad because, you know, I don't want to get into the level of talent, you know, that I had versus whatever, but I just, I just felt like I knew how to be places that was a little better for the guys, but you know, Brewster's awesome. No, no disrespect. So anyway, yeah, that's the Terry Landell story. And it actually turned into a little bit better there with that Tracy story one more time. Cause (laughs) I I do love that. And I can just see him getting all over too. You're like, come on, man. Uh, Too aggressive. I mean, I'm up for, but he just started wiring it. I'm like, hold on, man. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to make Tracy look like he didn't know. Right. Right, like he did to Brewster. But anyway, we'll get off of that. (laughs) All right, well, our next one, and this one's a cool one because, you know, we've talked about this uh, kind of a lot, but I I like the question. So it's JP at JP Vanilla Gorilla on Twitter, and he says, what was WCW like in 2000? He thinks you guys had potential, especially would have been great on Saturday nights as the heels for the high-flying teams. And you kind of were that for a minute, you know. But what was because you know right then it was kind of a weird scene back there. Yeah. And, and now were you there enough to kind of get a feel of what the culture was like in there? Yeah, I mean you knew that the, the like I wasn't in the I, we were just happy to be there type of deal, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so you know you got your top guys and all of them have their drama. They, yeah. My little money didn't make a difference to what was going on, you know. Sure. The sure. money they were losing. <laughs> I didn't yeah. have nothing to do with me. So, right. uh, yeah, I wasn't really in that conversation. I mean, you could tell, like, the the older guys, you know. And I'm not going to say, like, I've I've seen it worse at places, I guess. Uh, and, and right off the top of my head, I don't know a comparison. But, I mean, I, it just didn't feel that bad to me. Like I said, it's probably because I was having fun. But, sure, uh, sure. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, everybody knew something wasn't right, but I, I, and then you started before it got closer and closer and closer than you you really knew. But I mean, what are you gonna do, right? Yeah, and and I've said it before, and we actually had a two part episode where we had Shannon Moore and Big Vito, where we covered your whole time in WCW in depth, even watching matches, and had other guys that were in the matches with us. So I highly recommend going back in the archives there and listening to PG thirteen as WCW. But it's part one in part two, by the way, too. So we do cover a lot of this, but just to kind of as a refresher on things, because I know we've we've got new listeners, mm-hmm. what would you compare the WC? And again, I know it was a different situation, but what would you compare the the locker rooms of WCW to working in WWE? What would you compare that to? Um, really about the same, man. I mean, it's just the, they're both big giant companies, professional stuff. I mean, yeah, the boys are the boys, no matter where they are. And a lot of the same guys at the time that I was at one place were also at the other, but then some weren't right. A wrestling locker room at a professional level, man. Uh, yeah. And yeah. As, as I said, my role was never big enough in any of those for me to be, in that position of any kind of drama, really, you know, yeah, uh, right. And the ones me and Jamie created after hours, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I wasn't, that, that wasn't my hierarchy, you know. Yeah. And enough is not said about this either. Basically, as we looked at it and I did my research when we had the guys on and is this was essentially kind of the end for PG-13 in a major role, you know? Yeah. You guys sure. you it. guys did other matches, but after the WCW run, you kind of split up and you go one way and Jamie goes another and yeah. not and I don't think enough is said about that. You know, even though there's, you know, there's a little bit to say there, it, it's still kind of epic in a sense, in a way that, you know, I know you say your role was limited. You didn't really, you, you were just having fun and I respect all that. But if you think about it in the, in the whole line of things, it's kind of a crazy thing that you ended your, your career in WCW and essentially as a tag team, you know, so yeah. It is crazy to think about because, you know, everybody thinks of PG-13 as, and you are a legendary tag team. But what I mean by that is it's just like, wow, you know, the the yeah. run in WCW was the last one. Major match. Yeah, yeah, man. Anyway, I'm beating a dead horse, but I just <laughs> there's something there that I'm not. But I, I, I reinvented yeah. myself. by God. You did. 
You, it wasn't the end for you. I just mean for the tag team, you know. Yeah, I know it's I just had to throw that. Of course, the reinvention. We love it. So, okay. All right. Thank you, JP. Always appreciate it, man. Great listener on Twitter. So, our next listener is Ben Martin, my own homie from, he's, he's from my neck of the woods. Ben's part of the intelligentsia of the Jimmy Street. <laughs> world but anyway yeah so he's ben martin on facebook he's your narc is that what you're saying he's not my narc he's he, your stooge he's your snitch no he's not he knows everything man I'm he's like bastard. no but seriously he's yeah he is that way in a sense because he knows all these stories I got you. he's it's impressive the stuff he comes up with cool. i gotta give him a major shout out but anyway so this is an interesting question because the headbangers talked about it a little bit and i kind of we did talk about it a little bit when we were talking about your career too you didn't go into it that much but did tensions between ricky and tracy spill over into memphis while they were there yeah. For the Smoky Mountain feud. So basically, you know the deal. There was a yeah. there was an issue with their women in the mm-hmm. bar in Kingsport, Tennessee. And yeah. it, it turns into a big deal where Ricky ends up leaving or, or getting fired or whatever from Smoky it Mountain. Was more, I think it was more of a, from what I recall, it was a more of uh, them two, like, if he's going to be there, I ain't going to be there. You know, do you may take your pick type of deal, I, I recall. Okay. Okay. So there were times where they were both there, right? Fuck it too. If Ricky probably said fuck it, but at the same time, I think it was a, you know, I I, I remember it having something to do with look. If he's gonna be there, I ain't gonna be there type deal. Okay. So they were kind of drawing a line essentially. So. So in the in while they were both in Memphis, though, after that, how were things? You know. Uh. I remember being just so disappointed that Ricky couldn't be there because it was like fucking up the angle, you know, right. the same way uh, with man, we endured some shit right there. Like two pivotal points, like with Doug and Tommy and then Eddie passing away and Doug had to leave right when we were kicking things off. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so we had to improvise there. Doug came back. It all worked in the end. And of sure. course, as we talked about, did a phenomenal job filling in. Yeah. Uh, and then it was like deja vu. All of a sudden, Ricky can't be there. As soon as we're kid, we just beat him and shit in, the, in that Louisville Gardens match. You know, big deal coming up. And now Ricky can't be here. It's like, son of a bitch, man. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, man, it just, it, it sucked that it had to go down that way, but whatever. It does, man. And it was always weird to see Robert by himself, even in, you know, WCW. Or when Rick, with Buddy or yeah, whatever it's maybe. It, and great tag team. They're they're awesome, talented individuals, yeah. but it wasn't the Rock and Roll Express, you know. Oh, and Buddy Randell is a singles wrestler, you know. He I mean? is a, and a very good one, you know. So, but anyway, I was just curious. So, watch the hair, brother. Watch the hair, brother. So, did Tracy or Ricky ever say anything to you about like that guy's no good or whatever? Did they ever? Uh, you know, I'm sure because I would have to. It would have to have been you know back then sitting at home on your landline uh and yeah we all we talked on the phone a lot i didn't talk to ricky on the phone a lot back then but i talked to tracy a lot i'm sure something was said but i don't remember specifics on it yeah i mean did they ever in a but it's maybe not like I, I took sides on it or anything i don't remember doing that just the, okay. boy, the boys being the boys and the, the wrestling business as it was being the wrestling business that's all yeah, and on a much smaller level, I've been in a very similar situation before several times, and I've had to where it was like I felt like I should pick sides, but at the same time, I felt like in my, you know, whereas a lot of guys thought, okay, you should go with this guy because you've been tight with him, but I actually stayed with the company that he was disliking, and anybody that knows my story knows what I'm talking about, but the long story short of that is I stayed with the company because I was in a good spot and they were going to do things for me. So I, I think anyone that would ask you to quit a company for them is ridiculous because, and I know that's not this situation, but what I mean is, is you were tight with Tracy and yeah. you, you, you had a great run with Ricky. So I can see where there would be some, you know, yeah. 
walk in a fine line there. But anyway, yeah, I think that pretty much answers it. But I just, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm always, you know, these little things that are kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of like the little bitty stuff underneath, like what, what, is there anything else we need to know about this sometimes? And I'm, <laughs> I, I get in that sense too, where it's like, was there one detail that, that we didn't know about? And it's, it's, you know, I think that's why we ask questions, right? So. Sure. <laughs> yeah. To find answers. So thank you, Ben Martin. Thank you, JP. Thank you, Joey Cummings, for all the great questions today on Ask Wolfie D Anything. So that's it, brother. That's all I got. Word. Uh, Thanks, guys, once again for tuning in, and we will see you next week. And now a word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling, the podcast that's based on the old school, but can still help you find the good stuff from today. Jimmy Street and the Plastic Sheik, Jared, are the undisputed tag team champions of the wrestling podcast world. From thought-provoking topics to superstar interviews to action figure expertise, this team does it all, and all they ask is, Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling! Every other Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. That's right. It's the talk of Middle Tennessee, the channel you love to hate and the channel you hate to love. It's Brian Turner from Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. And if you're looking for matches from Wolfie D to Jerry Lawler to Dusty Rhodes and the team that put a pimp before your eyes and a goatee between your thighs, Booty Call and Athena, go to LostWrestling.com. See, I made it easy for you. Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. Booyah! Join me, Gene Jackson, for the Jackson Interaction Podcast, where I'll be doing one-on-one interviews with people from the world of professional wrestling, as well as stand-up comedy. You can get them anywhere podcasts are available in both video and audio form, but you can find them all at GeneJacksonPod.com. Hey everyone, this is Shane from Insane Shane's World. I release wrestling figures of enhancement talent, mid-card wrestlers, and wrestlers that you never thought would have a figure available. So if you're interested in adding a really cool and rare figure to your collection, then don't hesitate to contact me at shamtheman73 at gmail.com. That's S-H-A-M, the man 73 at gmail.com. You can also join my Facebook group. Just search Insane Shane's World. This is the big picture, Michael Jablonski. Don't forget to tune in every week to Jablonski's Pissed Off on the Mike Jablonski's Pissed Off YouTube channel. The hot frog, Willis Bart, he's gonna tell you all about it. He doesn't care what you think, you're gonna hear all about it. Mike Jablonski, Pissed Off, Mike Jablonski, Pissed Off, Mike Jablonski, Pissed Off. So that was another great episode. Hey, Wolfie, tell them where they can find you on social media. Jimmy, they can find me in the club, bottle full of bub. I'm just kidding. Uh, They can find me on Facebook. Uh, My personal page is Warren Wolf, W-O-L-F-E. I'm on Instagram, at Warren Wolf 13. You can always find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, at Live Wolfie D. Here's the thing. Wolfie always has offers for his autographed photos. He has a selection of some awesome photos from throughout his career that he will autograph and personalize any way that you want him to. Just contact him either directly at his personal Facebook page or through any one of our other pages, and we'll make sure you get in contact directly with Wolfie. Get those photos, right, Wolfie? Yeah, I've got some good stuff on there, you know, to help with the podcast. Folks, if you can't get out to a show to meet Wolfie D, there's nothing like that, especially for the fans of PG-13 and Wolfie D. And before we go, you can always find me, your host, Jimmy Street, at James Rock Street on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And hey, Jimmy, before we go real quick, I just want to add in there, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate First of all, the work you've done for this podcast. You have worked your butt off. Second 
secondly, the people that are liking the page. Beyond that, even more is the people that are listening. And we really appreciate that. Yeah. And remember, guys, the podcast drops a new episode every Monday at noon. And our past episodes are streaming now on demand on all major podcast formats. Thanks again. I got a cap for you, don't. He got a cap for you, don't. I got a cap for you, don't. He got a cap for you, don't. He got a cap for you, don't. And here we go. The original white boy that came out sagging, not bragging, don't be hating, cause I'm spitting the truth. Still loving it, color. Don't rush your mother. Utilize a hubcap. I like any other. Back in the day, I was NOD, and I was P to the G plus the one and the three. In case you forgot, they call me Wolfie D. Been cloned and copied so many times. Tired of suckers taking credit for what is mine. You know who you are without me name dropping Wrestling's first white boy coming out hip-hop Been doing it like this since 92 Played low for a while when you thought I was through Listen real close to these rhymes that I've injected This shit's so sick it makes your ears get infected Mad skills, no faking, there is no one great Cause I'm bringing more folks and over one for later Not here to play games, so you better be right You don't like me, so what? I really don't care Like the time I keep ticking and I can't be stopped You suck a step to the side unless you want to get dropped When I finish, I'll straight knock you out Please allow me to tell you what it's all about Gonna wind it up and I'm driving it home, it's Ruby D, baby. Huh, I got a cap for your dome. I got a cap for your dome. We got a cap for your dome. We got a cap for your dome. This has been a James Rock Street production.